In example C on the next page, we're going to do the same thing here. Now again, there's a negative here, so we should factor a negative 1 out of the entire parabola first. So it would be negative and then 2x squared plus 1x minus 15. And in order to factor what's in the brackets here now, we need to find two integers that add to 1 and have a product of 2 times negative 15 or negative 30. So the two numbers that add to 1 and multiply to negative 30 would be 6 and negative 5. And so remember what we do with the 6 and negative 5, we rewrite this with the 2x squared here, but we break the 1 down into 6x minus 5x. The minus 50 on the end remains the same. And so we common factor the first two terms. We can common factor a 2x out, and so we 2x and then 2x divided into 2x squared gives you x. 6x with a 2x factored out is 3. We can factor a negative 5 with the last two terms. Negative 5 factored out of negative 5x is x. And negative 5 factored out of negative 15 is positive 3. Remember again, these two, these two parentheses here should be the same. And so we can now finish factoring. We have the negative here. The x plus 3 factors out. And what's left then the other factor is 2x minus 5. Now we set each of those factors to 0 to find where the x-intercepts are. And so if I set x plus 3 to 0, we get negative 3 for an x-intercept. That's one of the two x-intercepts. And then we'll also we'll set the 2x minus 5 to 0. So I'll do that up here. And so if we go to solve for x here, we'll add 5 to both sides. So then we would have 2x equals 5. And then dividing out the 2, we get x equals 5 halves. So 5 halves is the other intercept, or 2.5. And so we plot those two points at negative 3 and 5 halves, or 2.5. So those are the intercepts. Now we need to identify where the axis of symmetry are, because that gives us the x coordinate of the vertex, and then we can find the whole, the rest of the vertex, the y coordinate as well. And so we find where that axis of symmetry is by averaging the two x-intercept numbers. And so x would equal, we would add the negative 3 and the 5 halves. Now in order to add these, I need a common denominator. I need to change that negative 3 into a, into a rational number or a fraction that has a denominator of 2 like the 5 halves does. So it right now has a denominator of 1, so I'd multiply it top and bottom by 2. And so negative 3 then would change into negative 6 halves. So 5 halves plus negative 6 halves, or 5 halves minus 6 halves, would be negative a half divided by this 2. Now remember the way you divide rational expressions or rational numbers is you take the numerator in the top and you multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of 2 or 2 over 1 is 1 over 2. And so multiplying these two rational numbers, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 and 2 times 2 in the denominator is 4. So we get negative a quarter. So that's the axis of symmetry, x equals negative a quarter, and here's the line right here. Remember that also means that the vertex's x coordinate is negative a quarter. We need now just to find the y coordinate. And so we take that negative a quarter, and we're going to substitute it in the original parabola in place of x. And I guess I could use this one as well, it wouldn't matter. I'm going to use the original one though. So putting negative a quarter here, and negative a quarter here, this is what I have to compute. Now, negative a quarter squared is negative a quarter times negative a quarter. Now, when we square negative 1, we get positive 1 in the numerator, and we square 4, we get 16 in the denominator. So this is actually 1 over 16. Now, the 16 in the denominator will divide evenly by this 2. So we divide that out. We're left then with just negative 1 in the numerator and then 8 in the denominator. The 16 that was here divides out with the 2. 2 goes in 16 8 times. And so that simplifies just negative 1 over 8. Subtracting negative a quarter, same as adding a quarter, and then we have the plus 15 in the end. Now in order to add all this together, I need a common denominator. So the common denominator would be 8. So I need just to multiply the quarter top and bottom by 2. So that will change this into 2 eighths. The 15 right now has a denominator of 1. So I would multiply it top and bottom by 8, because I want the denominator to be 8. 
So we get negative 1 8 plus 2 8 plus, and 15 times 8 is 120. So 120 8 Now negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So this is 1 8 then. Plus 120 over 8 gives us 121 over 8. Now you might want to change that to a decimal in order to actually graph it. It's more difficult to visualize what 121 8 is. But 121 divided by 8 is 15.125. So that's the y coordinate of our vertex. So the coordinates of the vertex are negative a quarter and then 121 over 8. So we can plot that point. There's the vertex right there. These are the x intercepts. And so the parabola must look like this. Flipping over to the last page in example 2, we're given a parabola and we're asked to determine an equation for the parabola. Now, Identify the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are negative 1, and so one factor here in intercept form would be x plus 1. The other intercept is at 5, so x minus 5 is the other factor in the intercept form. The only thing we have to determine now is the a, the stretch factor. And so we need a point on this parabola. And so I'm going to use the vertex. I actually could use any point. It wouldn't matter. Uh, but I'm going to use the 212 point, the vertex. So 12 is the y-coordinate, and 2 is the x-coordinate that will go here and here. And so that's what the substitution looks like, putting 12 in place of y and the 2 in place of x. Now, this is 3, and this is negative 3. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And so the equation now becomes 12 equals negative 9 times a, or negative 9a. Dividing both sides by negative 9, we get a is 12 divided by negative 9, or negative 12 ninths. And we can divide both of those by 3, and so a simplifies to negative 4 thirds. And so replacing the a here with negative 4 thirds, our equation is y equals negative 4 thirds, x plus 1 times x minus 5. That's the equation for this quadratic relation. And that's the end of the lesson.